Welcome to the body imaging cases. This is a 68 year old male with essential tremors, transient ischemic attacks, neck pain, and the radiculopathy. My objective of presenting this case is to raise our awareness of the osteosclerotic metastasis to the bony thoracic cage because this is frequently missed. Particularly in that osteosclerotic metastasis of prostatic carcinoma may occasionally be clinically silent. In the present case, the patient has been suffering from chronic neurological problems and may be the only symptom related to the osteosclerotic metastasis of the cervical spine was the neck pain and the radiculopathy. But on reading the chest X-ray, you may have very little clinical hints to let you search for such osteosclerotic metastasis. Remember that in radiology, we have findings or observations that go to your eyes directly. But in other occasions, it is the opposite which should happen. It is your eye which should go to the observation and search actively for that. And the finding of the chest X-ray of today with regards to the bony thoracic cage are from this second type. This case was a case of prostatic cancer with osteosclerotic metastasis to the bony thoracic cage involving the cervical spine, the lateral end of the right clavicle, the root of the spinous process of the right scapula, many ribs, notably the left anterior fifth rib and the sternum. So the first hint we can use to diagnose osteosclerotic metastasis on chest X-ray is to compare a certain bony structure to the contralateral side. And here we see increased bone density of the right transverse process of the first thoracic vertebra, increased density at the root of the spinous process of the right scapula compared to the left, and increase in density of the lateral part of the right clavicle compared to the left. The second hint that helps us pick up osteosclerotic metastasis of the bony thoracic cage is to be aware of the rib crossing density sign. On the left side, you see a diamond of high density formed by crossing of the left anterior fifth rib and posterior eighth rib. If you look at the density of the fifth rib, away from this crossing site, you may not appreciate that its density is high. And this is because ribs are flat and we are x-raying them along this flat axis. So the increase in density may not express itself, but when it is superimposed upon by an additional density, the difference starts to be clear. Before going to the next hint to diagnose sclerotic rib metastasis on chest X-ray, let us talk about osteoporosis. The line you see here is a line that connects the costochondral junctions of the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth ribs with their corresponding costal cartilages. We can see here very thin dense lines that represent the costochondral junctions. This is a detailed magnified view of one of these costochondral junctions and it is important to identify them, not to miss them for linear lung opacities. Now you can diagnose osteoporosis by looking at the cortical line of the anterior part of the rib as it approaches the costochondral junction. In osteoporotic patients, you see that this line gets lost before reaching the costochondral junction. 
in addition to the loss of the density as well. Now look at the left anterior fifth rib. Unlike all other ribs, it remains dense and its cortical line remains sharp to the costochondral junction. This is because it is having osteosclerotic metastasis. So this is another clue to diagnose osteosclerotic metastasis on chest X-ray. This is, of course, more obvious on three-dimensional CT. You can see the line passing through the costochondral junctions. And you see the vertical thin hair line densities of the costochondral junctions. And you see the leucency involving the ribs as they approach their costochondral junctions. This is a sign of osteoporosis. It is not a quantitative sign, but it gives you an idea about the status of the osteoporosis. And it becomes very important if you notice it in a young patient because it is expected to be seen normally in the elderly. Now look at the left anterior fifth rib, and it is clear that it is not suffering like the rest of the ribs from this osteoporosis. And osteoporosis is systemic involvement. There is no reason for one rib to be spared, except if it is having osteosclerotic metastasis. So the diagnosis here is osteosclerotic metastasis of prostatic carcinoma. And we have learned something about how to diagnose osteoporosis as well. Osteoporosis can be recognized by reduced density and cortical thinning of ribs as they approach their costochondral junction. You can make this diagnosis on any good quality chest x-ray and the importance of this sign is that it has its own standard of reference with it because the problem with diagnosing osteoporosis on x-rays is that the bone density may be affected by the exposure factor that's number one number two it may be affected by the overlying volume of soft tissue in the different parts of the skeleton. You get rid of these two problems here because you have your own standard, which is the lateral part of the rib away from the costochondral junction. So you compare the part of the rib which is close to the costochondral junction to that away from that junction, and both of them will be exposed to the two confounding factors of the exposure and the soft tissue overlay. We have learned that osteosclerotic metastasis may be subtle on chest X-ray, particularly if you don't have enough clinical data to drive you to search for these osteosclerotic metastases on reading the chest X-ray as what happened in the present case. And we have presented a couple of hints that may help us make the diagnosis. The most important of them are the comparison to the contralateral bone density. The second is the dense rib crossing sign. The third is the focal lack of rib osteoporosis in the elderly.